Hey guys, Alan here, back in the workshop uh, after a week's swanning around in my caravan. Uh, that was very relaxing, pleasant time. Uh, my wife of uh, nearly 45 years says she wants to spend a bit of time with me. I'm thinking that's got to be more important than being in the workshop. Anyway, what I want to do uh, in this video is have a look at this old girl. Um, I've had trouble uh, for quite a while really uh, finding centre height for tool setting and I've used a couple of different methods which I'll show and I'm really hoping to find a way of doing it a bit better but the problem is the lady is very badly worn and um, it's not actually that old it was data manufacture about 2000 something like that but it came out of a factory and it was thoroughly flogged so that I know there's a lot of wear in the ways and in the carriage so part of this video is about uh, just finding out where that wear is and what I can do to work around it um, yeah, okay, so let's get into it. So a method I use a bit and is obviously quite commonly used is the old ruler. Traps between the end of the cutting tool and the, the work. If you're right on centre, the rule will be vertical. And you can see at the moment, I think that the top is um, leaning towards me a little bit because the uh, cutting tip's a bit low. As I wind this up, you'll see the ruler straighten up. Maybe. And if you couldn't see the movement in, because it's quite subtle, that highlights the problem with this method. That on the larger diameters of work, the amount of movement that you see when you're adjusting up and down here is very slight. So it's difficult to use this method to get an accurate uh, height reading on large diameters. I'll put a small diameter in there, a workpiece in there, and you'll see the difference. Uh, actually, before I take this larger workpiece out and put a small one in, I thought I'd show the other method that I typically use, which is this little uh, spirit level gadget with a V that locates on the side of the workpiece. So at the moment, hopefully you can see that the bubble is uh, reading low. And as I lift the, uh, the tool, you can see the bubble coming up. So now we're, we're spot on. So that works quite well for these larger diameters. But it doesn't work very well for the smaller di diameters, as you'll see. Okay, so now I've got a, a much smaller diameter workpiece in with the ruler. And you'll be able to see that it's uh, much easier to um, see the movement. I'm not raising and lowering the tool very much at all. But you can see the ruler is uh, moving very clearly to give a good indication of, um, of um, the height of the cutting tip. So that uh, the ruler method uh, works all right for uh, much smaller diameters, um, but not so much for the large diameters. Conversely, This method, this thing, um, doesn't really know what to do with this small diameter. The way it's formed with this shallow V to locate on the side of the workplace, it just doesn't deal with um, small diameters. It's, it's just below its uh, size and it wobbles around and you just can't get an accurate result. So one of the ways I've been working around the limitation of this method on this thing uh, and also because sometimes we haven't got easy access around here anyway is to do the tool setting using the uh, side of the chuck now uh, in theory that should be fine but uh, as we go through this uh, video you'll realize as I have just done uh, why in fact that's a bonehead move it was never going to work for me given the wear on this lathe so Ruler is good for large. Uh, Ruler is good for small diameters, not good for large. This is good for large, but not good for small. But I have another problem with this lathe anyway. There's a lot of wear in it, and uh, that affects things quite significantly as well, as as you will see. So I want a method that works for any diameter, um, and uh, at at any uh, distance out from the chuck because the, the wear that's in the lathe is much worse close to the chuck. 
and uh, if you set centre uh, close to the chuck it isn't necessarily going to be the same reading when you're a long way away. It should be of course and on a lathe that wasn't worn it would be but here the, the apron um, basically runs, or the carriage I should say, runs downhill as it gets towards the chuck because of all the wear. So I think the next thing to do is get some metrics around the inaccuracies of this lathe. So I've got a, a ground test bar installed here and, and running true and a pair of um, or a DTI and a dial indicator and as they uh, traverse across you'll see that the uh, the DTI which is uh, showing basically tailstock alignment well that's pretty good but the dial gauge is showing that um, something weird going on the uh, carriage is basically um, not tracking parallel to the bar it actually is far worse than uh, it appeared in that picture though because you can see here the uh, top slide is pushed right back which means the carriage goes as far forward as, as it will go on the bed and then the problem really shows up as the uh, dial gauge gets very close to the chuck um, uh, with the um, the top slide where on the other way uh, fully forwards it means um, the um, the carriage doesn't travel so far uh, along the bed, and uh, in that situation, the, um, the 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 variation in the um, the height is very much less, as, as you'll see. Um, so this is how I get around the, the the problem. If I got to do parallel turning, I set things up like that, and you can see there's, there's actually a fairly consistent. Um, it's fairly consistent with that uh, with that setup. Okay, so I want to understand a bit more about the uh, where the wear on the ways of this lathe is. So I've set up this um, height gauge, laid it on its side. So I'm using it as a uh, as a parallel. I don't have a a parallel uh, ground parallel long enough, so I'll press this into service. Anyway, um, so we'll wind the cross slide across and uh, see what the DTI has got to say for itself. As we can see, the reading is going down as we go across, which uh, sort of surprised me at first, but I guess what it means is the, uh, the middle of the cross slide is worn um, and the ends of the, the apron aren't, so as it goes across, uh, it starts to rise up on the unworn parts of the apron. I think that's what's going on. And it comes back down again when it gets to um, full extent uh, of travel. So I think that's what's going on. Anyway, that's my theory for the time being. So that's what's happening at the tailstock end where there's very little wear on the lathe bed. So I'll turn this setup around and do the same test in front of the jaws where the wear is at its maximum. And we'll see what uh, comes, comes out of that. So we can see here anyway that the, the worst case here, about 0.1 of a millimetre. Okay, so we're set up uh, underneath the uh, chuck and we'll see what the wear story is here. So we're starting off at zero. Let's see what we get. So we're certainly going down. Yeah, gone down to what's that? Down to twenty, down to ten. So the wear story is a bit different at this end. Um, it's basically all one way. Uh, it's looking like up at this end. Um, there's 0.3 of a millimetre of wear which I have to say doesn't really surprise me. I've known there's a lot of wear in this machine. But anyway, that 0.3 millimetres has obvious implications for trying to determine the centre height um, and how to set the tools. So I've put a 0.3 millimetre shim or 12 thou shim under the low end of the uh, uh, travel and we'll see what uh, that does, what the DTI makes of the new situation. So now the 
cross slide travel tracks level across the full width of the ways. And I have to say, I don't really quite understand that, how it can track level here where there's a lot of wear, but uh, in front of the tailstock, it uh, traveled with a hump or a dip. Yeah, I can't explain that. I'll have to <laughs> mull it over some more. But in any case, what counts here is knowing that um, to get uh, a valid centering position, I've got to be aware of the fact that the, the back of the carriage is 0.3 millimeters lower than the front. So uh, I have to think about what that means for the way I set my uh, tools for center height. So given how much wear there is in this lathe, um, uh, it's starting to look really quite doubtful whether um, a height setting post to sit on the lathe bed is actually going to be useful to me. But I'll give it a go anyway. So um, key thing for me to determine is the difference in the centre height measured on the centre line of the lathe, which is where the, the pip in the middle of a facing operation is going to turn up, and the centre height if it's measured out here where the tool post is, which is where I would have the, um, the height setting thing. Um, I suppose I might consider making a bridge across the carriage so I can set the tool at the centre point. That might be a better option. Uh, but in either case, I need to know what the centre height is on the centre line, and over here on the over here on the uh, uh, on top of the bed, above the, the side of the bed. So that's what I'll do now. Okay, so I've got a new setup now for checking the centre height, measuring the centre height. So I've got um, a height gauge sitting on a platform. The platform is um, has a, a 0.3 millimetre packing piece under the back side there. So these two um, now um, scan as level with the DTI. Um, and I've used uh, a 0.5 mil thick feeler gauge here to give me a bit of a feel for the contact between the height gauge and the top of the round bar. So that's my um, 3 eighths um, high speed steel uh, bar. It has a 0.04 run out, so I've positioned that, so there's 0.02 each side of centre to minimise the impact of it. So my true centre height now is 164.52 minus 0.5 minus half of the 3 eighths um, dowel and plus the height of this platform. So I'll just go and work that out now. Okay, so I've got myself set up to um, take a centre height reading at this location, which is uh, roughly where I would be doing it if I make a, a height uh, gauge to sit on the bed and uh, set the tool height to it. So I'm interested to know what a centre height reading is at this location. Um, so I've got my 3 8 uh, high speed steel tool bit in there, which uh, is really quite around, it's precision ground, so it's quite round. And as you can see, I've got a run out of about 0.04. We'll position it so that we get that 0.02 each side of centre, so um, that'll have minimal impact on, on the reading. So now I need to uh, come over onto here and find out what size um, stack of uh, shims or gauge blocks I need over there to get back to zero. So I'll go and find some gauge blocks and we'll see what we need. Okay, so I've got my little uh, stack of three um, gauge blocks there. It's a total of 5.67 uh, millimetres. Um, so now I can uh, work it all out. I'll measure how high these um, blocks are. They're actually pretty close. Two of them are spot on three inches and the other ones are hair off. But anyway, they'll give me a pretty good reading. And then of course I have to remember to deduct half of the diameter of the uh, 3 8 diameter uh, pin. So working out the height of the stack with the three one two three blocks and the little stack of uh, gauge blocks and deducting half the diameter of the, um, the 3 8 pin, I've got a centre height of 229.50, which is rather surprising to me that it's so close to the 229.59 I got measuring it the other way. 
Um, I suppose I might consider making a bridge across the carriage so I can set the tool at the centre point. That might be a better option. So, I was forgetting. I already in fact have uh, a bridge. Uh, I made it for the um, travelling steady. I didn't have one for the lathe so I found something that seemed about right and made up this piece to bridge across the two front parts of the, uh, of the um, carriage. So sounds like a perfect platform to or seems like a perfect platform to run a height gauge from. So we'll give that a try. Okay, so put the bridge in. Height gauge sitting on top of the uh, cross line, and it won't reach down quite to that top surface. So there's a one, two, three block there. Well, I've measured from that as zero, and got one twenty point three four. So add uh, the uh, width of my two inch um, one, two, three block, and that'll give me a centre height to measure from that uh, bridge. Okay, so it turns out that I already had um, a suitable post. This is the uh, post from my uh, tool and cutter grinder for holding the pointing finger. But this block here is height adjustable. So I've just quickly bolted it down to the um, uh, bridge piece across here and I've got what I need. First up, let's try um, setting center height here using the ruler and I put the square there to make it a bit easier to um, spot whether it's um, upright or it isn't Thing like that you can see that the uh, the rule is pretty much vertical against the square so uh, if we take a, a facing cut like that a pretty good result I can't feel any pip there and um, that's a perfectly acceptable facing result so now Let's pull back from that and try and set it using this um, measuring across from a height post. So we'll um, loosen, loosen, oops, loosen this off. try to um, set this height using the razor blade it. I found that to be a lot more fiddly than um, using the rule I've got to say. But let's see if we've got to how well the results compare. Yeah, got a good result. But it took me quite a bit longer to set it up so for these smaller sizes, I'm definitely thinking the uh, rule is an easier option. There's another issue as well for me. So using the ruler method, I'm setting the height in the plane that I'm actually going to do the centering operation. If I do it using the height block on the mounted on the bridging piece, then the height setting is some way away from the face plane. Now, of course, on a lathe with uh, negligible wear, that would be quite fine. But in my case, because the lathe is so badly worn, particularly up close to the chuck, the difference between center, trying to set center here versus over there can be significant. So I, th I think I'm going to give up on the idea of the, uh, 
the, the give up on the idea of the height post. I just don't think it's going to work for me. So another method that I considered was um, setting the height from a, a calibrated uh, marker off the top of the top slide. But for me, with the, all the wear in the lathe, that's got the same problems as um, working off the bridge piece. Um, this uh, has got the same inaccuracies because of the wear in the, the bed and in the carriage. So uh, it doesn't work for me either. So putting it all together and wrapping up, because this lathe is so badly worn in the ways in the carriage, uh, any attempt to set the uh, tool height uh, working off the, the lathe bed or the carriage as a reference source is going to be problematic for me, particularly when I'm very close to the chuck. So the methods that are going to work for me, I have to stick with what I was doing, the little spirit level um, gadget for the bigger diameters and the, uh, the rule for the smaller ones. And uh, <laughs> don't use the spirit level thing on the side of the chuck when um, I can't uh, do it directly off that. Um, so I think I can go forwards with a bit more, uh, with an expectation of much greater consistency in my uh, uh, tool setting on centre height. So I hope there was some stuff in there that you found useful and uh, thanks for watching.